Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com and I want to give you my quick thoughts on using the Canon R8 in the real world for two sporting events. We had the Harlem Globetrotters as well as women's lacrosse. Now when I was shooting, I was shooting at 40 frames per second with the electronic shutter and some of the concerns out there is whether or not you can do that for shooting action sports and we're going to see in just a minute whether it was good or wasn't good. So what you're going to see right now is EVF footage directly from the R8. This is exactly what you would see if you were we're looking through the viewfinder. You will watch the autofocus going. You will see me shooting the photos. You'll see it go in and out of focus. You'll see what is going on. And after that, we're going to come back, look at some images, and tell you my first thoughts on using this in the real world. All right, so it's one thing to watch the EVF clips and watch the autofocus lock onto the subject and track, but when you're shooting photos, is it actually locked and hitting focus? And the answer for the most part is absolutely. It was fantastic to use the R8 for the very first time in an action sports situation and just have it work. Basically straight out of the box, adapted lens with the lacrosse with a 600 millimeter F4. So yes, adapted lenses work well, and I know that's a very expensive lens, but for shooting lacrosse, it worked really well. Let me jump in here real quick because I wanna show you Fropac 3 in action on this photo right here taken with the R8, starting with Zoolander, followed by Winnebago, Walter White, Prestige Worldwide, Mount Airy, Mentos, King Contrast, Gotham, Capone, Almost Famous, as well as Fifth Element, but my favorite from Fropac 1 is Skittles with one click, boom, even for sports, it works really well. So look, if you wanna speed up your wall workflow, give yourself a great starting point, or you're tired of presets that just don't work because ours work, we created 15 custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash fropac3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders to see the befores and the afters. If you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you wanna save even more and get Fropac 1, you can get the triple play bundle with Fropac 1, 2, and 3. Now, 
now, let's get back to the video. There's a couple of other things that I want to touch base on. We want to hit IBIS battery life. We want to talk about the memory card, but let's jump into this right now. This photo is with the electronic shutter. And the reason I'm showing you this is because everything looks fine here from an electronic shutter standpoint, right? There's no Boeing, it doesn't seem like anything squished. And on the next image, this is really the only time I saw any bending or warble at all through any of my shoots was this little part of the ball like that. Most people would never notice this, but I'm here to point out that I did see it in this one situation, but through the rest of the images, there was nothing there that was like, hmm, there might be an issue with rolling shutter. The fact that I'm able to shoot at 40 frames per second, that's 10 frames per second more than the R3 that I use. Now, no, it's not a stacked sensor, and you might run into some warping of balls every once in a while, but the fact that it's a $1,500 camera and I'm shooting at 40 frames per second for action and not having issues, that right there is insane. So right here, we got the guy going up for the layup. Perfect. 5,000 ISO, perfectly fine. Printed this print out, looks fantastic. You'd never sit there and be like, oh, there are issues. So lock on tracking, fantastic. 40 frames a second, fantastic. 5,000 ISO, is fantastic. No issues whatsoever. Just some more action shots that I wanna show you here. You will get a slideshow at the very end of this video of my favorite shots, the best of the best with Honor Sir, so that you can see what I captured. But it was a joy to shoot with this camera. Now, what I will tell you is that the buffer is roughly 40 frames, 40 shots. You only get 40 frames a second with this camera when you shoot with the electronic shutter. Now, depending on your ISO, if you shoot at 100 ISO, you're gonna squeeze more out of the buffer, something like up to 48. If you raise your ISO, because that's more data, you end up getting less shots in the buffer. So for the Harlem Globetrotters, I was around 41 to 43 shots that I could get in a buffer. And what I realized is you need to use SD cards that are V90, the fastest cards that you can find. Because if you bang through 40 straight shots in one second, you're going to lock the camera up and it's going to say busy for roughly four to six seconds before you can start shooting again. Now, if you do a burst of a half a second, let it go, a half a burst uh, for a half a second again, you're not going to outrun the buffer. You just need to be careful. Now, that's one of the considerations to take into effect because that doesn't happen with the R6 Mark II, but this is a less expensive camera, so keep that in mind when you're thinking about it. Was the lack of IBIS an issue? The answer is no. I'm shooting at 132,000, 1/32 of a second. It's not going to help any way to freeze the subject. So, I had no problem with the IBIS at all. The fact that she can come sliding into the frame and you saw it track her, that's great. And then just one more right here, 28 to 70 F2, um, just great, just fantastic. The fact that it works so well, even with the, uh, with the electronic shutter was great. Now I did shoot a couple with the mechanical shutter, it's just much slower. You're at six frames a second. And I think this proves right here that the 40 frames per second for basketball worked perfectly fine. But how is it for the lacrosse? So the reason I picked this image is we have a ball being fired here. Well, being that it's going away from us, probably not as much of an issue with bowing, but it did not bow from across the field. Now, this is a good piece of action where she is turning and coming up field. Everything looks perfectly fine. She doesn't look like she's warbling or that there's any issue. I didn't find any issues whatsoever. But again, being able to shoot at 40 frames per second is kind of insane with a $1,500 camera. Now, I had the, the luck of having these beautiful snowflakes falling during the game, and it nails the focus. The prints look absolutely fantastic. And having the adapted 600 millimeter, I mean, not everybody is going to have that, but being that this is very similar to the 6D, sorry, the R6 Mark II, and we saw with the R6 original and the R5 that adapting lenses, even third party lenses, is not going to be a problem. Moving on, uh, just freezing some action up here and there. Perfect top to bottom, not cropped. Kind of lucky to get the composition right, but that worked out as well. Um, here's a ball going. Does it look a little warped? I would say that it looks slightly warped as it's going up in the air, but for the most part, not an issue whatsoever. Uh, and then here's just another girl running full speed down the field, no issues. And then we have a girl firing the, uh, the ball at the net. Now, I know these sticks have a little bit of flex. I don't know if they have that much flex when you're, when you're shooting. So we are seeing some bending here. I would have to shoot some baseball to see if it's, if, it, if it's really bad, but 
I do think there is some flex in that stick. I'm not sure if there's that much flex in the stick or if that's a little bit of the rolling shutter that you would see. So guys, the, the R8 was fantastic to shoot. To have the same sensor as the R6 Mark II, to have the same focusing system as the R6 Mark II, not to be stacked, censored, but shoot 40 frames a second where the R3 that I use can only do 30 frames per second is kind of leading us to the future of what that R1 might hold. It's only insane to think about what the R1 might be capable of with a stack sensor when this camera is doing what it's doing for 1500 bucks. Battery life, I got through about 1600 shots and I was at about half battery when I was shooting basketball indoors. When I was doing lacrosse outdoors, I did go through one full battery uh, before the end of the game and I just threw another battery in, but it was about 28 or 29 degrees outside when I was shooting. So. I mean, the R8 is great for what it is. You have those caveats, smaller battery, no IBIS, which really isn't that big of a deal at the end of the day, especially for shooting stills. And then you have the one memory card slot, which is what it is. I'm not a fan of that, but if you needed to use this camera, as a backup, as a professional for shooting weddings, for shooting portraits, for shooting photojournalism, for shooting sports, for shooting landscapes, it doesn't matter. This is, this is an unbelievable camera so far. I'm gonna keep doing more tests and come out with a final review at some point, but I wanted to share this stuff with you right now because I was kind of blown away by what it was able to do in the real world in these sports situations. So thank you guys very much for watching. I am gonna run a slideshow right now after I do my sign off. So please be sure to watch the slideshow of the images. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.